Thanks for tuning in to part two. Back in part one, I set the stage for why GRC is awesome and underrated and why we should throw it a little love, as uh, Gerald Alger says in a video I'll link to and that I drew some inspiration from. Today, I'm unpacking my top seven list of why GRC is awesome from my vantage point and experience. I'm doing this to help connect great people with great jobs to fill the GRC portion of a three and a half million seat cybersecurity skill shortage. Closing that gap helps protect our economy and national security. What is governance risk and compliance? If you haven't heard of it, I had it myself back in 2019 and learning what it was is how I broke in. So we're a semi-technical team in cybersecurity that does governance. That's where everyone knows the company's objectives and risk appetite, and they make decisions that are aligned to it. Risk to reliably achieve objectives. We put guardrails and due diligence in place. That sounds a little bureaucratic and full of friction, but it's like having good brakes on your race car so you can drive faster and win. Compliance, that's how we do what we say we can do and can prove it. Also called integrity, which is the foundation of everything. And then some other cool things that are subservices within either GDR or the C in our service catalog include customer assurance and security awareness. Now, why is GRC awesome? Seven reasons. Number one, we are revenue enabling. Our security assurance work has us directly supporting sales reps in the field and occasionally interfacing directly with customers. That's where you want to be to understand customer needs, how your company can meet them, and how to make a business impact. Number two, breadth. We get to work with the top experts across all departments, the control owners. That includes the Security Operations Center, Architecture, Engineering, Product Security, IT, Finance, HR, Legal, Privacy, and I can keep listing more. I've really enjoyed learning about diverse topics ranging from revenue accounting to software development. Both very technical, very complicated, very interesting to get a front row seat uh, to observe and understand those, those processes and their outcomes. But on this point in particular of being an auditor, going across departments, some people are going to disagree with me. They're going to say it's not cool, it's not fun. So I kind of want to bust that myth. So the myth is that it's unpleasant to book an audit meeting with an intimidating expert control owner who's in a defensive posture because they're being audited. They didn't ask for you to be there and they want you out of their hair as quickly as possible so they can get back to work. And they're ready to bite your head off if you ask a dumb question because, and they have giant information asymmetry to do so. Well, that, that can happen to some companies with, if there's an adversary relationship between compliance and, and the business. But hopefully there's not. And what I've found is that it doesn't have to be this way. If you're clear about the business objective of the audit, if you focus on the WIIFM, the what's in it for me, of the other person, you do your homework in advance, you arrive early, act respectfully, ask good questions, be brief, be brilliant, be gone, and you'll win their hearts and minds. And that's a great feeling that'll come, keep you coming back for more. I've gone from control owners saying, hey, that wasn't so bad. That was less painful than I've experienced before, to, hey, I think we actually mitigated some risk there. Like we actually added some value by doing this, this exercise. It wasn't just less painful, it, would actually, it actually helped. To, hey, it actually helped a lot. It helped me change the culture of my team to be more cyber risk aware. And by the way, we have a new project coming up. Can you please be involved? So that was a pretty fun evolution to be the underdog and kind of go through those, uh, uh, you know, do better, better job than had been done in the past to uh, get to this level. Number three, top management. GRC gives you exposure to that, which is a great opportunity. Number four, immersion. When you're exposed to all the departments, you get to learn through immersion and practical application. And of course, I'm not an expert in the psychology of education, but we can probably agree that better than reading about something or watching a video about it is to do it. And in GRC, you get that exposure to be hands-on in a variety of, of domains. So even if you want to be very specialized, very technical, that's great. Uh, it might be helpful to your career to rotate into GRC and then rotate out. Because when you go into your swim lane, you'll bring with you that bigger picture perspective on how your function fits into the rest of the company. Number five, business is booming. As demand continues to ramp for customer trust and assurance due to digital transformation, the cost of cybercrime, and the proliferation of flawed and complicated technology, we continue to be in demand. Number six, this is my favorite. GRC is a feeder role to get your foot in the door. In 2019, I didn't think it was possible for me mid-career to break into cybersecurity from finance. I heard it was an, you know, a hot industry, 
looked like pretty interesting and meaningful work. But I was specifically told that I was not a good fit because I didn't have a computer science degree or a technical diploma. But that was bad advice. Only, you know, it's, it's a big portion, but only a portion of cybersecurity problems is, is technical blinky lights and software. Um, there's a lot of people, process, and technology to talk about. So, you know, and, and let's be objective. Let's go to cyberseek.org. So here's a path that I've actually taken to go from finance to IT auditor to cybersecurity consultant to cybersecurity manager. If I can do it, you can do it. You can connect your career to one of these paths. And, um, you know, here's the facts from an impartial th third party on that it's possible to break in. Uh, and, and GRC is a great feeder role in these paths. Number seven, Blue Ocean. So here's Harvard with Red Ocean, Blue Ocean strategy. If you can find a way to add value in an uncontested market space, you can make an outsized impact to elevate your career. Cybersecurity is the new kid on the block in the early innings. It's not the well-worn path. And so it's an opportunity to jump in on the ground floor, bring in a lot of process and bring some maturity from other functions you've been in that can add a lot of value. So that's the full list unpacked. I hope it was helpful to throw GRC a little love and uh, hopefully it helps open some doors and get people to consider this as a career path. I'm wide open to your questions and feedback. If you have any, please leave a comment. Please like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Be safe. Be well.